So this is what they call honey trapping, I suppose, Rachel, isn't yes. it? And honey trapping is one of those, you know, it's slightly controversial because people go, well, you're kind of tricking people that might otherwise not have done anything. Yes. Um, why did you do You obviously cheated on, but why did it affect you so badly that you've you've ended up doing what you do. Yeah, well, I think for me it went on for such an extraordinary length of time. How long? Um, well, for over six years I was being cheated on, I was engaged to be married at one point, and uh, it changed the whole focus of my life. This is all the same man who was doing yes. this to you, not different relations? No, no, no. no. So how did, you first, yeah. <laughs> how did you first discover that he was cheating? Um, I guess you'd call it an instinct, a hunch that something was wrong and um, it was very helpful to me when he left his email address and password on my desk one day and I took a sneaky look. And, and would you, do you think you would have taken a sneaky look had you not have been feeling suspicious? No. No. Not so it was because the way you were feeling, you, you needed to look. Absolutely. And what yes. did you find? Uh, yeah, it was quite interesting actually. I found. Um, it had been going on for a very long time and it was multiple people. I think what shocked me the most was that it wasn't a chance encounter with somebody, but we were actually dealing with a predator who was going out, really putting his name around and finding whatever he could. So he was on different websites? Several so. different websites, yes. He, here's what I don't understand. If he was doing all of that, why did he still want to stay with you? Why, why, why didn't he just move on? and Go and be a efficient? single guy? Yeah. And yeah, well, it's a really good question and one that I posed myself to him. Mm -hmm. um, but, of course, it's nice to come home and have all of that security at home, mm -hmm. you know, have that stable home life. Cake and eat it, Dick. But also go it? out and have your cake. Absolutely, and I think some people do actually get a buzz out of having two or three people on the go, and it can be to do with issues of their own. Um, it, it's interesting because so you were saying, you know, why did he want to stay? Well, you're a lovely lady, so yes, I can see yes, why yes. he'd want to stay. <laughs> but also, it's why did you not trust your own instincts at a lot earlier stage? Because that is what bothers me a bit about this. You know, I often, I'm, I would say I hear every day from people who are doing some sort of tracking of their partner. You know, yes. people are getting more computer savvy, they know how to hack each other's phones and things like that. And what I want to say to people nearly all the time is don't focus on what's happening while you're apart and get all this energy pouring into becoming a detective. It's look at what's going on when you're together because that's what really matters. You know, it's, it's are you being loving? Is he treating you in a, in a loving way? Are you having a great sex life, hopefully, so together? You, you know, saying it's that Rachel, the focus. Rachel should look at herself and see if she bears some of the responsibility? There is that. There is that in it. But I think even what I'm saying in the first place is trust your own instincts. You knew something was wrong. Absolutely. And rather than get, you know, all that energy going into playing detective, it, it's talk to your partner and say, you know, we're just having a miserable time together. I'm really unhappy. You know, I want you to, to tell me, you know, other changes we need to make here. You know, how are we going to get this so that we're having a really good time together? Right. Is now exposing cheats, is it a, is it a passion for you? Is it a business for you? Or is it an addiction for you? It's a business for me, to be honest with you. Is it a passion for me? Uh, I become passionate when I hear about people being cheated on. Yes. Um, it's certainly not something I, I, five, six years ago, I would have thought I would ever find myself doing. Yes. Um, now, when people hire you, it's very interesting. Um, uh, Rachel's uh, fees range from £70 to £250. And uh, for that, uh, £70, um, for £70, you will send the client's spouse flirty messages, sort of try and fish there and see if they reply. For £120, you conduct a full internet search to see if the spouse is registered with adultery sites. And then for, yes. what do you get for £250? What happens there? Well, for £250, one of our agents will actually um, arrange to meet up with them and turn up and meet them. Um, so they'll be at a bar, they'll be wired up so that we can record the conversation, there'll be photographs taken, um, there is somebody who's there all the time, uh, a security type bodyguard, um, and people can, if they choose to, use that evidence in order to get a divorce. We, do, we don't ever give a, a promise that it will stand up in a divorce court, but it's something that they can use. Would you say that you're often just confirming what they probably already knew? Always. Yeah. We're always confirming. If your relationship's good and you're happy, you don't come to somebody like me 